कला प्रदर्शिनी 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 ततुम 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 नमस्कार श्री गुरुभ्यो नम एंड श्रीमती पार्वती रवि गंतुसादा सॉरी फॉर द डिले वी आर वेरी ग्रेट एंड होप टू मेक एन इम्पैक्ट ऑन सोसाइटी टुडे बी गांधी जयंती एज वेल एज in tribute to another legendary singer in our family padma bhushan shri s p balasubramanyam who inspired everyone and will be remembered forever we couldn't have picked a better day we also congratulate alert for their milestone anniversary supposed to be the 15th anniversary i would like to thank mr santosh kumar a parent and volunteer at kala pradarshini who worked a lot to coordinate this event last year i organized summer workshop with alert and all my students enjoyed and very interesting it was we hope at the end of today's session there are some life saving lessons to be learned again this is an awareness session and alert has more detailed trainings which will be explained soon over to kartik mr kartik yes ma'am good evening good evening one and all here this is kartik venkateshan from the organization called alert vk um before i'll start the session i would like to thank kala pradeshni organization as well as uh, parvati kantasala ma'am for the wonderful opportunity uh, to alert given to alert um because this is one way we are doing the tribute session to um, our uh, great spb sir also this is alert anniversary day october 2nd is alert anniversary day so thank you so much for your wishes ma'am and um, and one and all here good evening now i am going to start my presentation just a minute i'll share the screen and uh, i hope you are all able to see my screen now yes yeah we are able to see yes thank you thank you so much so here it's saying how can you gift a life or a life yara gift panna mudiyuma god namalukku life gift pannirkaru mother namalukku birth kuduthirukanga so adukaprama nama deivama paakkaradhu yaar appdin kettinga na doctor most of the time nama any medical emergency comes doctor kitta poi nama sollu neenga da engalukku deivam epdiyadhu ivara kaapaathunga appdin solleta likewise எவ்ரி இண்டிவிஜுவலும் இதுல ஒரு சின்ன ரோல் ஒரு சின்ன பார்ட்டிசிபேஷன் இதுல இருக்கு நம்மளுக்கு அது என்ன அப்படின்னு கேட்டீங்கன்னா நீங்க வந்து அவங்களுடைய லைஃப அவங்களுக்கு மறுபடியும் கிஃப்ட் பண்றதுக்கான ஒரு ஆப்பர்ச்சுனிட்டி அங்க நீங்க எடுத்துக்கிறீங்க சோ அதுக்கு என்னென்ன பண்ணணும் ஆஸ் அ காமன் மேன் ஹவு வி சப்போஸ் டு கெட் ப்ரிப்பேர்ட் ஃபார் தட் அதுதான் வந்து நம்ம இன்னைக்கு இந்த செஷன்ல வந்து பார்க்க போறோம் so it's a simple session very easily it will go uh, it's 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 a 
என்ன சொல்றது ஒரு ஒரு ஸ்டோரி மாதிரி வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் சம் காமன் சென்ஸ் அபவுட் மெடிக்கல் அந்த டைம்ல எப்படி நம்ம ரியாக்ட் பண்ணா எப்படி அதை வந்து ஸ்டாப் பண்ணலாம் எப்படி வந்து ஃபர்தரா அவரை சேவ் பண்ணலாம் அப்படின்றத பத்தி தான் நம்ம வந்து இந்த செஷன்ல பார்க்க போறோம் இது மெயினா நம்ம யாருக்கு கத்துக்கிறோம் அப்படின்னு கேட்டீங்கன்னா திஸ் இஸ் வெரி டிஃபிகல்ட் டு ஹேண்டில் ஃபார் அவர் ஓன் ஃபேமிலி மெம்பர்ஸ் அண்ட் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் பட் அட்லீஸ்ட் அவங்களுக்காகவாவது நம்ம இதை கத்துக்கணும் எதுவுமே தெரியாம இருக்கும்போது இன்னும் ரொம்ப கஷ்டப்படுவோம் பட் அட்லீஸ்ட் கொஞ்சம் தெரிஞ்சு இருக்கும் போது அந்த சுச்சுவேஷனை கொஞ்சம் ஹேண்டில் பண்றதுக்கு ஹெல்ப்ஃபுல்லா இருக்கும் ஓகேங்களா சோ இது ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் ஃபேமிலி ஒரு சைடு அப்படின்னாலும் கூட நம்ம ரோட்ல நிறைய ஆக்சிடென்ட்ஸ் பாக்குறோம் நம்ம இந்தியா ரோட் டிராபிக் ஆக்சிடென்ட்ஸ்க்கு ரொம்ப ஃபேமஸ் ஆன ஒரு ஊர் அப்படி இருக்கும்போது நம்ம ஏதாவது ஒரு ஆக்சிடென்ட்ஸ் வந்து நம்ம ஃபேஸ் பண்றோம் அப்படின்னும் போது ஹவு கேன் வி சேவ் சம்படிஸ் லைஃப் தட் இஸ் வாட் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி இன் திஸ் செஷன் ஓகே ஓகே so in this session one thing uh, i'm going to talk about how you supposed to learn what you supposed to do that is one part and second part is most of the time we hesitate to help people if it is uh, uh, within the four wall in our in our organization campus or in our home in our in our college campus or school campus we can able to handle the situation but when third party when we are when we are handling the same for third party or on the road we feel very panicking we don't know what to do exactly so at that time we have a two major stoppers one is we don't know what to do and second is police law enforcement so these two are the major uh, reason for a stopper so i'm going to address for a legal uh, how to get out from the fear of legal okay there is a law called good samaritan law i hope everybody aware about that motor vehicle act you have to buy a, if you are buying a vehicle you have to register in your name and you get license to drive that vehicle right so that is come under the motor vehicle act likewise there are so many things are uh, there in that motor vehicle act and uh, in that act was amended in 2019 motor vehicle act 2019 section 134a is talking about good samaritan law who are all good samaritan we who are all coming forward and helping the person who's fighting for life they are all actually called victims and who were helping they are called actually good samaritan to encourage more good samaritan to save people on the road government initiated this as a mandatory law in india so i'm going to talk about very few specific point what is how the law is protecting us while helping others okay number 1 total protection from police this one word is good relief for everybody isn't it most of the time we have a fear of police what in case police comes and what in case the police officer will say what in case if i want to become a witness for that situation i don't want to involve in any cases or court i don't want to be a witness so on that time what can i do you no need to anything or you no need to do anything you can be simply help the victim and if anybody asking you want to become a witness you can simply say so that i don't want to become a witness but i would like to ready to help the victim here that is good enough statement and this is how the police law is completely protecting and no police will force you to become a witness or asking you to stop helping others because law enforcement country people everybody are here to save others to save people life right so so no one have a rights in country in world to stop helping others and number 2 no detention at hospital no liability to pay bills most of the time this is what happen in the movies right when the hero shift the victim to hospital the hospital will uh, uh, will ask so many questions and then uh, the the hero may face tough situation so these are all the uh, uh, movie experience or some some people may face the real time also but as per good sam written your duty is handing over the victim to nearby hospital is good enough and you no need to pay any bills so far hereafter and number 4 no compulsion to disclose identity you no need to show your aadhar card voter id or give any contact number phone number and all you can simply hand over the victim and then you can leave the place and in case the person loses their life it's not because of you helping the victim it's because of the incident occurred so no civil criminal liability will be forced on the good samaritan so this is how the law is enforcing law is protecting us 
while helping others. So here after requesting everybody step forward and then be a good Samaritan and save as many as people because India losses too many people on the road traffic accident. So hereafter we have to change not only just a road traffic accident, but in case if we have elderly people in our home, if they are facing something like a heart related issue or a say normal unconscious state, though we are all educated, we don't know what to do. We don't know how to handle that situation, isn't it? So that is why here I'm going to uh, teach you with a certain topic that borrowed from AHA that's mean American Heart Association, which is giving the basic knowledge to general public. So the topics are chain of survival, vitals, basic life support, and some common medical emergencies. So what is chain of survival? With help of first aid as well as treatment, how the person supposed to need to go, undergo one after one chain, right? So any incident occurred, Immediately, people are supposed to call an ambulance. That is the first chain saying early activation of ambulance. And ambulance will take some time to reach the spot. Until that, as a first responder, you are supposed to provide the first aid depending on the situation. So that is in the, in the second chain that is mentioning early CPR. What in case the person's heart is not beating. For that also, we have a first aid. So you have to go that much extent. And number three is AED, that's mean automated external defibrillator that defibrillates the heartbeat. It is available in India at airport, mall, railway station, and some companies as own it. So if you know how to handle, or if you don't know how to handle, just switch on the device. It is automatic device. So it will automatically allow you to do what next okay so that is why it's called automated external defibrillator and number four is advanced life support that's mean ambulance ambulance is detached from the emergency department where it has all the uh, main emergency equipments inside the vehicle and then they'll provide the treatment while shifting the victim from road to ambulance and then they'll provide treatment until they are handing over the victim to doctor. So that is why it's called advanced life support. And in the fifth chain only, victim is meeting the doctor. That is post-cardiac arrest care. So this is how uh, anyone is supposed to go through so that he will easily get dispatched after getting proper treatment. So what is our role here? We have to call an ambulance and we have to provide basic first aid to the victim until we are handing over the victim to ambulance. So that is what alert as an NGO. Uh, it's a 14 years old NGO, as I mentioned here, which is giving first aid knowledge to general public as a first responder, how they're supposed to do and how, what to do exactly. Okay, I will uh, uh, open the platform for question and answer at some time later after some finishing some topic. And there we have discussed uh, if you have any doubts. Okay, so now we are going to talk about at what circumstance we are supposed to call an ambulance and what are all the first aid you are supposed to provide until ambulance comes. Let's see that. Before that, I am going to introduce one more concept called vitals. Vitals of human body which make us alive. That is generally called CAB. C -A -B. In this, C stands for circulation, A stands for airway and B stands for breathing. So this is CAB. If any one in this cab is not functioning properly, then immediately this two will be in the life-threatening situation or the person will be in the completely life-threatening situation. So circulation, airway, breathing, which these three are main uh, vital in our body. As a first responder, until we are handing over the victim to ambulance or paramedic, we have to make sure the victim have all these three. All these three are functioning normally. If it is functioning, and you have to ensure it's functioning further. If it is not functioning, and you have to ensure it's artificially fun functioned by you until the ambulance comes. Okay, so so that that is the major first aid. And I'm going to talk about how do you know whether the victim have a vitals C A B. Okay, so first I'm going to talk about C. C stands for circulation. So what is circulation? It is blood circulation. Oxygenated blood needs to be circulated in entire body. That job done by heart. So through blood, through blood, what happening? It's it's circulating the vitamin, mineral, uh, energy, 
and uh, oxygen to the entire cell in our body so that we are we can able to be alive so this is by checking by heartbeat we can able to know whether the victim is victim have a pulse or not okay as a first responder when when somebody says check a pulse immediately our thought process will go that we have to hold the victim wrist and then check it out the pulse right but here after as a first responder you have to check victim carotid pulse that's mean on the neck side you have to check just follow uh, what i'm doing right now you raise your chin and then use your two finger for a men you can able to see this adam's apple the ball kind of organ here for a female it is not available for you but from here center of the throat from here 2 inches right or 2 inches left any side any one side you can slightly skew this portion so that you can able to feel your own pulse for that you have to raise your chin and then so the and we can able to feel better when you have a time to check some pulse it on pulse or not okay so what is airway from nose to lungs or from mouth to lungs the passage actually called airway this passage needs to be clear 24 by 7 then only we can able to do inhalation exhalation correct but what happen when we are in the unconscious state you can able to see the tongue region here this is tongue okay in our mouth this tongue region don't have a bone so because of that when we are in the unconscious state the tongue will fall back and it ensures that our own tongue is blocking our own airway due to that most of the people are losing their own breathing just look at the video here the airway is the passageway between the mouth and lungs The airway must be open so air can enter and leave the lungs freely. Blockage of the airway is most commonly caused by the relaxation of the tongue when a victim becomes unresponsive. That's so surprising, isn't it? <laughs> so our own tongue is falling back and then it's ensuring our own airway got blocked and due to that most of the people are losing their breath. Once breathing stops, what happens? The circulation also will stop. until ambulance comes if you are not aware about all this action then we may lose person's life so this is how this is how most of the time we are losing the victim on the road itself so as a first responder we have to ensure cab is clear so how do you avoid tongue fall back so when we are in the unconscious state or when we, when the victim is in the unconscious state as a first responder you have to do the technique called head tilt chin lift that's mean as i mentioned earlier just you have to raise your chin you have to make the neck region straight it's not compulsory that you have to make the neck region 100% it straight at least the l portion supposed to be like a 80% it's curved okay so how do you do that what is head to chin lift place your one palm on the forehead another hand two fingers on the victim chin and then do head to chin lift by simply performing the head to chin lift let's see how it is ensuring the airway gets cleared i'm going to play another animation for you it's talk about how we are cleaning the tongue fall back tilting the head and lifting the chin pull the tongue away from the back of the throat and open the airway too hard on the soft area under the chin doing so can block the airway also don't push the mouth completely closed okay so by simply doing this head tilt chin lift we can able to open the airway we can allow the air get inside we can allow we can allow the passage get increased okay so this is head tilt chin lift by ensuring the airway opening and what is breathing how do you know whether the victim is breathing or not by simply seeing the chest movement or abdomen movement we, we can ensure that victim is breathing or not because of lungs movement in our body how do you how do you check generally generally you have to go closer to the victim's mouth and then turn your head little bit and look at the victim's chest or abdomen but due to covid now 
what AHA, American Heart Association and the rest of the doctors and everybody saying that you no need to go next to any victim. You just be a distance way and then slightly tilt your head and check it out whether the victim's, ch uh, victim's chest or abdomen is raising or not. By simply, do, by simply seeing it is good enough to know whether the victim is breathing or not. Okay, you no need to go closer because going closer to anyone in the uh, pandemic situation is it's, it's a wrong way. So you have to be very careful in this. So this is how we have to check whether the victim have a vitals or not. With this concept, we have to call an ambulance, we have to do a um, uh, first aid based on the situation and we have to check the vitals. These are all the concepts. Based on this, we are going to do the first aid now. That is generally called basic life support. The another name of first aid is actually called basic life support. So this is we are going to do until ambulance comes, until ambulance taking care of the victim. As a general public, what we supposed to do? It's a six step process. Step number one, check for scene safety. It can be any kind of situation. It can be any event of an emergency and you are ready to help the victim. Then immediately check what kind of incident was happened. Electric shock, drowning or uh, road traffic accident, whatever it is, you have to put stop part for the emergency situation, then go next to the victim. You should not offer yourself directly before you're cutting off the uh, emergency situation. Like if it is road traffic accident, first park your vehicle aside, put a lift indicator, park your vehicle in a safest place, lock your vehicle, take a key, keep your belongings in your bag and then go next to the victim. Before you are entering the victim, make sure you have stopped all the vehicles on the road and then go next to the victim so that you will be safe. When you are safe, you can able to save the victim. Otherwise, you also have a chances of facing that kind of emergency or if it is electric shock, what as a first thing you have to do as a first, first responder, you have to cut off the source and then touch the victim. Emotion, most of the time when, when it is emergency situation, emotion overcomes so that without thinking about all these assaults, we will immediately touch the victim. So don't do that. In this pandemic situation, COVID-19, you have to wear a mask compulsory. Likewise, ensure that victim also wearing a mask. If the victim don't have a mask, get some cloth, cover the nose and mouth region. So this is how we are ensuring both you and victims are safe in the situation. And if it is road traffic accident and you know the victim may have a multiple fracture, then do not move the victim. The benefit of doubt is good enough. You don't need to confirm 100% this victim have a multiple fracture. When the victim is saying it's too much of pain and, the, and then you are able to see that the way the accident happened, the impact are created, then you can assume the victim can be have a multiple fracture in the body. So you should not move the victim from one place to another place. While moving the victim only, we are creating so much of damage, especially in the spinal region. So ambulance, doctor and everybody is requesting you as a first responder when the victim have a road traffic accident, do not move the victim. You have to treat the victim like a trauma incident victim or multiple fractured victim. Okay, you just treat him like that. You don't need to confirm about it. So this is most important number one. Do not move the multiple fractured victim. Fine. This is how we are ensured the scene is safe. Now you have to go next to the victim and check it out what kind of problem the victim is going through. For that, we have to check the response. The victim can be in the shock situation. So he will be in the temporary uh, unconscious state. But when you touch and shout the person, that will ensure the person's gain the consciousness immediately. So kneel down next to the victim and use your two hand and tap off, tap on the victim's shoulder. Here we have a collarbone, isn't it? This collarbone is very strongest bone. Even the victim have a multiple fracture. This won't get break that easily. So tap the victim here. Also, this is friendly approach area for opposite gender. So kneel down next to the victim and then tap gently on the shoulder and shout above the normal decibel, like how you try to wake up somebody in, from the sleep, right? That is how you have to do the touch and sound kind of stimuli. This is good enough stimuli to get some human body's consciousness, okay? If the victim is not reacting for this, then he is in the unconscious state. If the victim is trying to react for this, then keep on do and get a proper consciousness at one point. 
no need to worry about we are we don't have a water what in case if i'm not sprinkling water on the face and all okay just touch and sound is good enough to get some human sense so this is called actually step number 2 check for responsiveness and what is third one you know the victim is reacting now then do they help whatever the victim required or he is asking asking to you if the victim is not reacting then as a first responder you have a lot of role to play where you no need to worry about the cause reason how the victim is faced this kind of situation everything you just simply do one thing that is the victim is unconscious and this is good in ஒருத்தங்க to reduce your panickingness and to get more help always call for help or shout for help okay you have to shout for help and ask particularly one person to call an ambulance you have to point out saying that sir you please call an 108 sir you please come for a help that is how we have to point out the person in any emergency situation like uh, like if it is within our family then you have to say dad please call 108 mom you please come here and i need your help this is how you have to ensure the every uh, every statement what you are saying that needs to be converted as a action immediately so you have to deliver the statement like such so third point is call for help and activate the ambulance as a first thing and what is number step number 4 somebody is calling ambulance and as a first responder you needs to be there next to the victim and check whether the victim have a vitals or not you have to check c a b everything you can check the pulse you can open the airway and then check it out whether the victim is breathing or not if the victim is breathing if the victim have a proper pulse then no need to worry about rest of the problem for that doctors needs to be provide some treatment but until ambulance comes we have to maintain the victim's vital other it is functioning without any interruption for that we have to turn the victim into a specific position called recovery position i'll let you know what is recovery position look at the image number 4 in this slide in this image number 4 this this is look like so simple right every day while we are sleeping we turn ourselves into right or left and then we feel very convenient in this position so this is medically called a recovery position you have to maintain the victim in that position image number 4 until ambulance comes but i'll tell you what are all the benefits behind this uh, recovery position but before that i'm going to explain how you supposed to put someone into recovery position because the victim is not going to coordinate with you is not going to support you in any manner so you have to turn the victim's body completely like this so for that we have to follow some steps step number 1 your 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 the very initial step is you have seen the scene safety and then you are kneel down next to the victim to ensure the victim's consciousness right so and then you have activated the ambulance you you did the vital thing and all vital self functioning with the same position you no need to go here and there reduce the interruption in the same position you have to take the hand which is very close to you and place it like a l shape place it like a l shape look at the image number 1 wherever you are kneeling down that side hand needs to be kept like this palm facing upward and is supposed to be in the l shape and take the opposite hand and then place it in the opposite shoulder like this palm facing downwards okay this is step number 2 we can say this is l shape and this is v shape this look like a v right so we can say v shape and number 3 a you have to bend the opposite knee place your palm below the knee and then raise the knee like a a shape when you raise the knee above you can able to hold the knee now and then you can able to hold the opposite shoulder in the image number 3 they are holding the nearby shoulder right but you have to hold the opposite shoulder and opposite knee 
so that you can turn the victim easily into the recovery position. While raising the leg and then turning the victim, look at the image number four, that raised leg was kept like a L shape. So it's allowing the body to turn only one half. So that is how we are ensuring the victim in the proper recovery position. And whatever the hand we kept in the shoulder, that needs to be placed down. And then we can we, we are going to use that palm like a pillow for that victim. So this is how we have to keep any unresponsive victim who is breathing normally until ambulance comes. There are some logic behind this recovery position. Logic number one. While keeping the victim in this position, more oxygenated blood will flow to the brain so that victim gain conscious within one or two minutes. I have faced so many personal experience. Whenever I put someone into a recovery position for the unconscious victim, they will gain conscious within one or two minutes in this position. They will immediately open the eyes. They look around. Everything they will do. I will ensure that the victim is sleeping for next five minutes in that same position. And then I will allow them to sit them properly. And then now I will offer anything to drink or eat. Okay. Most of the time we will feed the water, right? But you know, you should not feed the water to unconscious victim. Let them be in this recovery position. So we, to gain immediate consciousness, we have to put any unconscious victim like this. This is benefit number one. And benefit number two, the chin will be up so that the victim airway will be cleared. And benefit number three, in this position, the mouth is facing towards down angle. So any liquid in the mouth, say saliva or something happened in the teeth region and then he's uh, bleeding profusely and everything will be stored in our mouth. The unconscious victim don't have a uh, ability to gulp his own saliva or blood, whatever it is, or unable to split that. So when we are keeping the victim into recovery position, in this position, mouth is facing towards down. Due to gravity, everything will drop off. You no need to pull any, anything out. Okay, It automatically drop off. So no liquid in the mouth that is good enough to ensure airway is clear. Okay, So this is how we are going to ensure unconscious victim is breathing normally and uh, may, we made sure nothing is blocking in the airway region as well. Here I'm going to play a small video which will teach you about how to place someone into a recovery position. Look at the video now. Okay, so now I'm going to open the platform for question and answer. If you have any doubt, anything you want to clarify until this, from the scene safety until put someone into recovery position, if you have any doubt or clarification, people who are watching in the Facebook, people who are being in this live session, they can raise the question. FB people can put comments in the comment section. For live people, they can put it into the chat box. We can immediately quickly discuss about it. Thank you, Kartik. It was a wonderful uh, educative session. Thank you. And I hope everybody is enjoying. And also, I would like to thank. Um, okay. I think go ahead with the question. Participants, do you have any question? Please go ahead. It can be anything. No need to worry about it. If I, if I raise this kind of question, what trainer will say? Nothing like that. These are all going to be the stopper in, in real medical emergency situation. So whatever the blockage you have, even a small doubt that you have to clarify here. So please drop a note and get clarified about your doubts. Yeah, hello. Hi, this is, uh, my name is Vishali here. Hello. Okay. Um, I had a personal experience uh, losing my dad uh, in June in the very similar situation where he had a car, cardiac arrest. Now, 
while we were at a complete uh, loss of uh, you know at, at that point in time we didn't just didn't know how we did our best we didn't get an ambulance because it was uh, the peak of uh, intense lockdown in yes. chennai yes. and um, they said there is uh, no ambulance available for uh, the hospital that we took him to uh, said there is no protocol for a non covid emergency and all of that so finally uh, within a matter of minutes uh, we lost him so yes. my question here is while he so he when he went unconscious his uh, uh, his saturation was at around 54 to 56 he was still able to talk and when we kept some oxygen his uh, saturation improved to 80 but uh, within the next 2 3 minutes we heard this uh, rattling noise that was uh, uh, you know emerging from the chest area uh, so is is what does that mean so it was rattling meaning i could hear it outside uh he was still a conscious but i could hear it outside uh in that situation uh, would it have been uh, of any help if you know we had i know it's post mortem but it would it have helped if we had moved him to a recovery position or uh, what would have happened yeah ma'am uh, when we are getting these kind of symptoms we don't have anything to do because we are not doctors only doctors can provide treatment and then they can ensure need that needs to be stopped everything but we have a role as i mentioned in this flow chart here if the victim not breathing the pulse was stopped completely then we have another first aid to play that is cpr that needs to be done maybe maybe you kept oxygen and then after some time later it's is everything gone um, into zero then until you are reaching to hospital to revive back that uh, until you are going to hospital we can perform the cpr but uh, but it's 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 all about the incident ma'am the kind of problem the victim is going through and then the kind of damage occurred in the body so based on that only treatment also get success and failed right so so in in this area we really don't know even if you know some that uh, problem name say cardiac arrest or heart attack whatever we can name it we are unable to do anything because these are all required proper treatment for the but until reaching hospital we have little things to little role to play after uh, breathing stops we immediate, immediate cpr is required that that would have uh, revived back the victims breathing normally at least at least until we are reaching to hospital so that we can hand over the victim who have a pulse breathing but only unconscious state that is completely different thing for doctors to take care of it but in, during the pandemic situation this is not only um, so uh, incident ma'am i have heard so many people uh, who lost their life uh, because of uh, there is no proper bed allocation and a proper uh, immediate admission in the hospital likewise so i'm really sorry for that ma'am we have a role only to play uh, to perform cpr in that case okay hello? thank you thank you ma'am hello yes yeah hello ha ah, hi uh, rajiv yeah. ji yeah hi yeah this, i'm dr rajiv i'm a ent surgeon so uh, yeah it was a nice uh, session just uh, briefly to uh, summarize like uh, you've given like gist of what all to be done but uh, uh, without a uh, hands on it is really difficult to do a first aid so mm-hmm. probably this gives a concept yeah. for everyone into what is a kind of first aid and yes. uh, to further answer the question what the previous uh, like uh, uh, yes. had asked about so it's probably a, like what we called as pulmonary edema he has gone into the end stage wherein uh, his lungs are fully filled with uh, water fluid uh, because of his inability to breathe and because of which it becomes filled with fluid so in such a condition uh, even if we do a cpr we won't be able to revive the patient so it is something called a terminal stage wherein uh, so people get misconception that uh, uh, it is called gasping wherein the person breathes his last breath of air in such a condition even if we do a cpr also we might not be able to revive the patient so because we have seen many times in casualty and emergencies where in person thing that uh, uh, the 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 person is uh, breathing for uh, gasping for air you can try some cpr and somehow revive the patient but unfortunately it is like uh, a condition wherein uh, we are like uh, out of hands and uh, then uh, um, even a icu setup or a ventilator might not help so uh, that is one thing where uh, like uh, first aid cannot uh, revive a patient from who's like uh, beyond the stage where we cannot revive and uh, uh, just by doing a first aid it is not possible to revive them. yeah that's my point thank you yeah thank you so much for the clarification uh, dr rajiv most of the time uh, as a common man we can do our bit 
rest all doctors can able to do in most of the time a victim may not accept the treatment and then they may lose their life but it's not in our hands certain area those are all certain area which we are unable to do anything for the but as a as a common man ma'am uh, as you mentioned if we would have done something we would have saved something uh, somebody's life that uh, that emotion that aspect i'm talking about here um and uh, in 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 certain life in uh, real time emergency uh, after after uh, participated this kind of workshop people were done cpr and then saved so many people life that personal feedback i have received so so it's a depending on the person and then situation as I, as mr as doctor mentioned so far now uh, some victim may not accept the treatment also that might be the last stage of uh, their their own so so we'll move on with this note we'll move on to the next uh, uh, question i think in the chat back somebody okay they are talking about epilepsy uh, mr uh, mrs preeti will definitely talk about epilepsy at the end of the session and uh, setu bharat if a fainting what are the immediate measure to be taken and uh, immediate measure needs to be taken whatever we did so far that is the good enough thing where you have to ensure you called an ambulance and then check the vitals and put him into proper recovery position until ambulance comes that is good enough measurement you have to do nothing beyond you, you you do not imagine you do not expect me to say that you have to provide this kind of tablet or keep this kind of um, uh, do this kind of medication because medication needs to be done by only doctors we are all first responders so we have a limit based on the symptoms we have to do certain things only so whatever we have seen in this flow chart that is good enough to do for the unconscious state of victim and with this state i move on to the next uh, topic that is called cpr what in case the victim not breathing victim don't have a pulse okay until ambulance comes or until to revive the person's uh, heartbeat we have to do the uh, first aid call cpr that's mean um, you have to do cardio pulmonary resuscitation to ensure that uh, vitals are revived artificially okay so cardio that's mean heart pulmonary is a respiratory system and reassessing from outside so cardio pulmonary resuscitation needs to be performed in the order of cab to ensure that brain is receiving adequate oxygenated blood continuously otherwise the victim may face coma kind of or a brain dead kind of situation to avoid such and to get back the pulse immediately in the heart we can do cpr so as i mentioned earlier we have to go through the order of vitals circulation airway breathing now i am going to talk about circulation how as a common man we supposed to do the circulation we have to identify the heart location first where exactly our heart is located in the rib cage and number 2 you have to perform 30 compression how many compressions 30 compressions by holding your hand like this place your one hand first and then another hand like this okay the first hand you have to keep the heel of the hand okay heel of the palm on the victim's chest i'll i'll come back to that later now in this circulation you have to perform 30 compression and each compression needs to be compressed at least 2 inches deep it is not easy it is not a joke but it's going to be very 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 difficult and the toughest first first aid uh, one so push pushing 2 inches deep to our rib cage is going to be make you tired very easily and number 3 is you have to maintain some speed generally 60 seconds per minute isn't it in the wall clock but by performing cpr you have to go through 100 per minute speed if you have a capacity where you have energy to do 100 compression within 1 minute you are welcome to do it but most of the time what happened by performing 30 compression itself is very difficult for a common man all of sudden performing 30 compressions make you uh, more uh, gasping so that is why people are asking to stop at 30 compressions so i'm going to play a small video now in this video i'm going to uh locate you where you supposed to place your hand and uh, uh, which angle you supposed to maintain your hand position everything just look at the video we have a rib cage you have to remove the cloth we have no other option you remove the cloth and then look at the rib cage joining point from there 2 inches above that that's mean between the nipples there exactly you have to place your heel of the palm and then place your another hand do interlock 
and come 90 degree above. No need to sit comfortably. Come 90 degree above and ensure that compressing arm is straight. That means the elbow used to be bent right, but while doing the compression, it needs to be straight and put your entire body weight. The weight is supposed to come from your waist. Okay, so put your entire body weight on the victim chest. While you are pushing properly, that, that will ensure that compression reaches to the heart. So you have to go at, at the max. Push hard so that we can bend the ribcage and then reach the compressions to the heart. And while compressing the chest, you have to count louder to throw the artificial energy on the victim's chest. So count louder, say 1, 2, 3, 4, like that until 28, 29, 30. Up to that one cycle, 30 compressions, you have to count louder. You have no other option. I'll play this video once again for you. Uh, interruption. So this is how we have to perform 30 chest compression and you have to ensure one more thing that is every compression needs to be very hard that means you're putting your entire weight on the victim's chest right that needs to be for all the 30 compression also fast when you're performing that 100 per minute speed energetically when you count 1 to 10 in the energetic way and then rest all it's not supposed to be like a tired manner it's supposed to be the same fast and also ensure that what are the amount of chest we have compressed and needs to be come back. Compress and recoil. That is, by performing this, we are ensuring the heart is utilized in the right order. So here I'm going to play a small video while you're performing. What are all the things happening in the chest? Due to the chest compression, what are all the things are happening within the body that are going to see like animation? Okay, so this all the things are working when we are doing the chest compression. So as a first responder, after 30 compressions, that's been hard and fast with recoil compression. The next thing is uh, airway. You have to ensure the victim's airway kept open. That's by simply performing the head tilt chin lift is good enough to open the victim's airway that you have already seen how to do so. And after opening the airway, Generally, we are supposed to provide two rescue breath, but due to the pandemic situation, also for the uh, public, general public who are participating in this kind of awareness session, AHA's recommendation is 
to perform only bystander cpr that's mean 30 compressions open the airway and check whether the victim gained pulse and uh, breathing if the victim gained pulse and breathing that's mean you have successfully saved someone's life so immediately put him into recovery position if the victim not gained any pulse or uh, breathing then go back to the 30 compressions once again so you have to follow this chain 30 compressions open the airway check whether the victims vitals are revived or what if not then go back to 30 compressions so you have to do this keep on this is called hand solely cpr for especially this is done for uh, bystanders or a general public like us so this is covid uh, while during the covid situation uh, even people who trained like a, a paramedic nurses and doctors they are all supposed to do only this bystander cpr until this covid uh, pandemic situation gets end because going nearby someone's mouth or nose it's it's, it's the chances of getting the covid 19 um, virus right so you should not go do, you should not do that you should not blow the air to victim's mouth you have to perform only hands only cpr that's mean bystander cpr so call ambulance cover your face cover victim face if required perform cpr also utilize aed if it is available so this is what the uh, statement we have received from the ahc and how long are you supposed to perform the cpr you have to do this same chain 30 compressions open the airway and then check whether the victims vitals are there or not this you have to perform until ambulance comes until ambulance arrives that's mean at the initial stage of BLS, you are already done the scene safety, you are next to the victim, you have done the victim's responsiveness and if the victim is not responding that time onwards, you, you ask someone to call an ambulance. So the ambulance might be on the way. If ambulance arrived all of a sudden, hand over the victim to paramedic until that you have to perform CPR or in case the victim started breathing, then put him into a recovery position and wait for ambulance or when you feel very tired, as I mentioned earlier, 30 compression itself make you so much of tired. So if you feel very fatigued or tired, stop performing CPR. You are on one side, right? So call for help. In the emergency situation, don't think that you are the only person to help the victim. If you know the concept, make use the concept with others. So call for help. Ask the person to kneel down opposite to you. You perform 30 compressions. Let the uh, another person perform the 30 compressions. This is called two rescuer CPR, okay? This is how we are ensuring that heart is reaching non-stop compression. That is how the heart beats, right? So you have to perform non-stop compressions to the victim. So these are all the uh, points where we're supposed to stop performing CPR, okay? So in this, if you have any doubt or clarification, we can quickly have a... Um, uh, you can unmute yourself and you can raise your question or you can put your questions in the chat box also. Any questions? Any doubts? Hi, Karthik. Uh, this is Priyanti. I just wanted to know, when you're doing CPR, you put your whole weight, right? Your upper body weight is basically on that person because even your elbow is not bent. How won't the rib get hurt? I mean, how do you ensure that you don't end up hurting the person instead of actually helping them? Okay. Okay, ma'am. Two things you have to think about here. One is... It's not in our hand whether we can break the ribcage or not, okay? Sometimes the victim bone is very weak or the elderly people bone have always, always weak, right? So when you perform this kind of CPR, we may break the ribcage. It's, it's not in our hand sometimes, okay? And second thing is, here the stage where you're in uh, uh, performing CPR, right? Here, if you not perform CPR, definitely you lose the person's life. The person is no more after that. that the situation is like that okay so one thing you have to keep in your mind very clearly that if you're not perform if you're not going to perform cpr you'll definitely lose the person if we hurt the person we create much more damage but the heart beats revives that's good enough to take the damage after treatment <laughs> so to get a treatment the body required vitals so don't worry about the damage which you are increasing or uh, the person, uh, you are getting hurt the person. Uh, if you not do, the person may lose the life. We don't have any other option also. So don't worry about all those things, ma'am. Okay, just thank you. Just wanted to ensure it won't make things worse. It won't, ma'am. Uh, generally, what doctors used to say, if you break the ribcage, 
that is advantage for the first responder people who perform the CPR because it's very tough. As I mentioned, you are putting your entire body weight, right? So once the rib cage got break, it's very easy to reach the heart. So you can e easily perform CPR. So this is another way around. But don't try to break the uh, rib cage. That is not our intention. By in by mistake, if it is got break, then don't need to worry about it. That is what I'm trying to say. Thank you, Karthik. There's another question coming up. Yeah. The chat box. How do we confirm ourselves that the CPR we perform is right? Um, Ma'am, even the person who trained in CPR, in the medical emergency situation, the panickingness will completely take over the role, ma'am. So we don't know whether we are performing the right CPR or wrong CPR. The, the position where we kept is right or we are doing the two inches depth or one inches depth. Nothing. You won't, you won't feel anything, ma'am. Our only intention is the person is not responding and we have to revive him back. So this is how it's going to be. And whatever we do so, that is end of the day. Uh, rather than zero, at least the 30 percentage or 50 percentage or 80 percentage, whatever you are performing the way of CPR is good enough for the person now. So just go ahead and do it. If you are not doing it, definitely it's, it's like a zero percentage. If you're performing, at least that 10 percentage would change the victim's life sometime. So don't worry about that, whether we are performing right or, not, or wrong. There's no wrong here because if you're not performing, that is the wrong one. Um, uh, Dr. V. M. P. Rao. Yes, uh, Dr. V. M. P. Rao. Uh, whatever we have, uh, uh, whatever I have so far conveyed is that is for adult CPR. What's mean by adult CPR? People who grown completely, the bone was completely grown. People, we can simply say 15 plus. Nowadays, people are uh, getting grown 15 itself, right? So 15 plus and all, we can perform two hand CPR. That's when place your two hand on the victim chest and then do two inches depth. For people who's below 15 are so weak or or a children children category, that's been the age of 2 to 15, we say. In in, in Western country, they'll say 14, but here at least we are saying 15. So place one hand and then do one inch depth CPR compressions. This is for children and people like an infant, newborn baby up to one year, one and a half year or up to two year, if the baby is too tender, they place your two fingers center of the chest and then go half inch depth. You have to perform only half inch depth. This is how you have to do. So infant is this just two fingers half inch depth. For a child, one hand, one inch depth. For adult, it is two hand, two, in, two inches depth. This is like a, we are doubling it. Doubling it. Do we have a different types of CPR, Priya, ma'am? Um, yes, this is what the variation for the child, infant, and uh, adult. Uh, and uh, under the proper CPR, it needs to be 30 compressions followed by two rescue breaths. You have to open the RA and then provide two rescue breaths. But due to the pandemic situation also, most of the people not willing forward to provide the rescue breath. That's why the uh, bystander CPR was innovated. So we'll perform the bystander CPR. That's good enough, ma'am. Any other uh, doubt or question? We'll move on to the next topic, right? Thank you. So, um, in, in India and most of the places, the immediate first aid is going to be offering water to the unconscious victim or providing water to the even the conscious or panicking victim. Offering water is the immediate one we used to do, right? But when the heartbeat is very fast, whenever we are in the tensed, whenever we met with an accident, the, the heartbeat by default needs will be in the uh, uh, high, high rate, right? So at that time, it's not advisable to provide any liquid to the victim's body. So this is most important number three. I'm going to talk about once again the same Tang region image. Uh, image. I'm, 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 I'm just displaying it here. Here you have to focus two more things. At end of the Tang region, you can able to see the epiglottis and you, you can able to see the two passages here in our throat region. This is trachea. That's mean um, um, we can simply say windpipe, which the air is getting into lungs. And there's a small passage 
with the maroon maroon color right this is food pipe whatever the amount of food we are gulping that needs to be traveled in that thin pipe only that is why people asking you to mash the food properly and then gulp otherwise it will get choke okay okay forget about all those things now we are going to talk about epiglottis this epiglottis is like a lid kind of organ which is close the windpipe and allows the food to reach the food pipe when we are in the unconscious state like how we are unable to move our own organs likewise this epiglottis organ will not function at all this time when people are forcing to feed the victims a uh, feed the water to victims mouth what happen it may reach to the windpipe okay by a windpipe it may reach to the lungs so you should not allow anyone to feed water to unconscious victim that is danger one it reaches to lungs rather than the food food bag so so it's like literally we are doing the wrong thing so you should not encourage people to do so if anybody performing you simply say that sir if you provide water it will reach to lungs and due to that the person may lose the life please don't feed the water to unconscious victim this statement is good enough to make them stop and the victim gained conscious after that you can offer juice or even full meals that's good enough but when the victim is unconscious you should not provide water to the victim so this is the main flow irrespective of any event of an emergency this is how we have to kick start the process scene safety responsiveness of victim based on that we have to call ambulance whatever the ambulance you want private ambulance or government ambulance whatever but immediately you have to activate the ambulance and until ambulance comes as a first responder we have to maintain the vitals so check vitals if vitals are there then put them in the recovery position to main make sure the uh, vitals are maintained properly if the vitals are not there until ambulance comes you have to work for it artificially do a proxy job for vitals role so you have to perform cpr immediately so these are all the most important we have seen in this workshop should not move the trauma victim you have to maintain the unconscious victim who is breathing properly in the recovery position and should not provide liquid to liquid to uh, unconscious victim these are all the main important three uh, thing and next we are going to talk about some common medical emergencies so randomly if we if we fall down the bleeding or a fracture can be happen simply right it can be due to some um, normal small accident or by by mistake while uh, children are playing in the playground they may face this kind of situation so any bleeding or any fracture what as a first responder we supposed to do we we supposed to stop bleeding right so you have to put direct pressure on the wound wherever the blood is oozing there you have to place the clean dry piece of cloth always use the clean dry piece of cloth take a cloth and then place it on the wound wherever it is bleeding and apply direct pressure on the wound yes it is going to be painful but this is the only way where we have a opportunity to block uh, to seal the blood further bleeding okay so that we can save blood loss put direct pressure and elevate above the heart level if it is arm we can simply raise the arm above the heart level if it is leg make sure the victim is lying down and then allow the leg was raised a little bit so that we can simply arrest the bleeding what in case the blood is oozing and the the amount of cloth whatever we have placed on the wound it is not enough and it's for the bleeding then what you supposed to do place another cloth on top of the first cloth like a add on okay you should not replace it because blood have a clotting tendency um, once it comes out that the first cloth has lot of uh, uh, tendency of getting clot so you no need to remove that cloth from the region you you should keep on add and if we have a first aid kit in our uh, next to us then we are going to do proper dressing then you have to do always make sure that you did you did a non sticky bandage what's mean by non sticky bandage you should not apply cotton directly on the wound when you apply cotton directly on the wound it will stick in the wound and then it's very difficult to clean after later so you have to roll the cloth whatever the gauze cloth you have and then and then after one layer of roll you have to keep the cotton now the sufficient amount of cotton based on the wound you keep and then do further dressing so that we are ensuring that the cotton is not sticking directly on the wound so this is how we have to do the non sticky bandage but most of the time if bleeding is apart from head leg and arm 
these regions, these regions, whatever I have mentioned so far, these can be raised above the heart level. But apart from the abdomen, belly region, chest, and thighs region, if these places are started bleeding, we may lose bleed, we may lose the blood within few minutes. So these are all the places where we are unable to raise above the heart level. Also below the heart region, due to gravity, more pressure will be there. So lot of amount of blood will be. uh loosed immediately from the victim body rather than head injury people are thinking that head injury is the only reason where we lose more of lot amount of blood no only these places abdomen belly region chest and thighs regions have a uh, chances of losing lot of amount of blood so immediately you have to take a uh, huge cloth and then arrest the wound direct by performing the direct uh, pressure on the wound what in case the impact reached further deep up to the bone and then bone bone got cracked or become two pieces uh, or we don't know whether it is fracture or not but if if you are uh, if you are trying to touch the region the victim is shouting and due to pain he is crying like that then treat that situation like a fractured one we we can confirm later whether it is fracture or not if the victim is unable to bear the pain that might be the reason for fracture if it is fracture you can able to see the skin turn into reddish color that's mean internal bleeding can occur and that portion will be uh, got swollen immediately so swellness and tremendous amount of pain is the symptoms of fracture it can be uh, airline crack fracture or it the bone become two pieces also everything needs to be treated like a fracture so what as a first responder we can able to do we can simply wait for ambulance rather than moving the victim rather than we do something to the uh, fractured victim we always do proper support to the injured region immobilize the portion at one point and then wait for ambulance if we are planning to shift the victim in our own vehicle then for a leg what you supposed to you, you you should immobilize the leg by using the other leg if one leg got damaged use the other leg uh, in home we have a bed sheet we have a shawl towel everything right so when we are arresting the two leg there must be some gap between the legs when you put some uh, bed sheet between the legs that will give cushion comfort and it will reduce the pain little bit to the victim and below the knee there is always some gap when we are when we are sitting like this there's a below the knee there is some always some gap so through that gap you have to uh, insert the thread connected shoe lace if it is we are in the school or connected um, id tag or uh, or if we have a chudida shawl we can tear it like a three pieces or towel whatever the cloth is available put it under the knee and then move it one towards the thigh region move one towards the uh, ankle region one on the knee region you have to arrest the leg completely in this three portion so that we are ensuring that leg was completely immobilized now we can easily move the victim shift the victim where under where under we want and to reduce the pain we can we can apply some ice pack that will make the numbness and then reduce the pain but it won't cure the broken bone and all okay for a arm any one of the arm got broken then take a churidar shawl and then tie it around and ensure it's reach up to the belly button so what can we can do we can we can insert the broken arm inside the cloth and then we can spread across the cloth to uh, cover the entire uh, arm region so this is how we can protect for much more support we can if we are in the school we can place the scale or we can use the rolled newspaper or we can use the calendar monthly calendar that needs to be folded and then kept and then we can use the shoe lace or id card anything that needs to be tied around and then we can keep it in the uh, sling so this is called sling generally whatever the cloth we are using in the neck that is called sling if we don't have a cloth for sling then we can if the victim is wearing a shirt we can remove the second button third button and then we can insert the hand inside or if we are wearing if anybody is wearing a belt remove the belt and then keep it uh, wear it like a garland and then hold the uh, broken arm in the belt and then now move the victim to hospital but my personal advice is if anything happens we just follow this rice rice stands for rest ice compress and elevation apart from arm and leg region and we have so we have a rest of the region where the neck skull backbone uh, hip and all can get break right so this kind of region we if we do something that might 
it take a much more risk to the victim's uh, backbone um, what i'm trying to convey is the information from the brain to body needs to be traveled via this backbone only so if any one of the disc got slightly adjust then we are created huge impact in the victim body where they can get paralyzed that is why we are saying do not move the victim here and there make sure you are following this rise or when the victim have a dislocation in the while playing the football or volleyball whatever it are lifting the heavy equipment rise for 20 minutes dislocation can happen so during this dislocation you can follow this rise rest putting proper support to the injured region we are we are ensuring that the injured region got proper rest and to reduce the pain we can do the ice compression and sometimes what happen broke um, broken bone can be teared our own skin layer it can out it's like a incision kind of one so for that situation we can use the we, we have to arrest the bleeding also so we can we can uh, use the cloth to compress the region or to reduce the swelling in the future region we can we can cover okay and if required if we want to elevate the region we can put proper support and then elevate to avoid the further bleeding in any of the region so rise rest ice compress and uh, and elevation these are all the thing we can follow and waiting for ambulance more than 1 hour even 2 hour is absolutely fine in the fracture situation you no need to rush immediately you have to rush with uh, uh, with the right support where the paramedic ambulance paramedic will ensure that the uh, injured region was compressed or immobilized properly and then they will shift the victim so always wait for ambulance in this kind of cases and uh, as a third point as a third topic i would like to cover about choking what in case the victim got choked that mean uh, as i mentioned earlier we have a very 10 percentage of pipe for to carry the food right for the so there if you are trying to gulp a huge amount of idli pieces or fruit or some chocolates solid chocolates or um, or kids especially infants they will swallow some um, uh, eraser or coin something right so yeah. this are all the situation leads to choking so how we supposed to handle the choking situation as a choking victim would i able to talk hey please someone come i i got choked this is how i express my feeling no this this region was completely sealed and I, i'm unable to breathe in breathe out so that itself is making me much more panicking that what i'm unable to breathe i'm going to die this is how my reaction will be so i'll catch my neck and then i'll try to get the attention from others these things will happen at the cafeteria dining hall or in the restaurants so when somebody is struggling right there with the uh, uh, eyes full of tears and then the panicking face and unable to do anything so you have to recognize the situation as a choking and uh, you have to immediately perform the first aid called abdominal thrust or hemlich maneuver what is abdominal thrust or hemlich maneuver you have to go behind the person from the belly button 1 inch above or 2 inch above where the foot bag is there okay there you have to place your one fist and then put your another hand and then do upward thrust in this image the person who is wearing a specs who is standing behind the victim is doing the upward thrust okay this is like a scooping the ice cream push and dig it when you do upward thrust what happen we are making the vomiting sensation to the victim so that the victim can uh, the foot particle may come out do not try to feed your fingers inside the mouth and then try to uh, take the foot particle out because it's already reached here any foot particle once it's reached the mouth region it will get mingled with uh, merged with uh, saliva so it's it's not easy for us to hold the foot particle grip it may escape from your finger and then it will go further deep in this strong region we are this is like we are we are pushing the foot particle much more uh, we are making the situation much more complicated so do, do not um, put your finger inside the mouth what in case the victim is taller than you and you have to reduce the victim's height then only we can able to do the himlik maneuver in the right order so here i'm going to play a small video about how to handle the tallest taller victim for the uh, himlik maneuver
okay so this for adult how to perform the himlik maneuver for the adult and what in case if you are alone and no one no one is next to us to perform the himlik maneuver what do we do what do we do and that situation that is called self abdominal thrust by by using the dining table chair back side or dining table or slab where we are placing our own abdomen and then squeezing our our, our abdomen that is called self abdominal thrust and what in case the victim is pregnant lady we are unable to squeeze the abdomen isn't it so for that time or or even a obese person it's very difficult for us to reach from the uh, behind the person so what you have to do you have to you know where is the v point right so from the v point in the, in the joint area itself we have to place our hand and then do the chest thrust we have to squeeze the chest region so that we can put pressure in the lungs so that we can ensure the food particle reaches out for a pregnant lady there's two lives involved mother and child so you have to perform uh, chest thrust immediately and uh, remove the food particle as soon as possible and the most avoided person is infant uh most of the time infant face this kind of situation uh, than the adult isn't it so uh, we have a movie knowledge where we can hold the victim upside down and then tap on the back right so rather than doing so you have to tap behind the behind the shoulder only but place the victim like a house shown in the image sit properly ensure you open the victim's mouth forcefully because infant don't know how to open the mouth or if you open the mouth then only the food particle will come out this are all new for them so you have to forcefully open the victim's mouth and between the shoulder below the neck you have to gently tap you have to gently tap this is called back close by performing a back close what happen we are providing some um, vibration in the neck region so that the food particle will come out this will this will give impact a serious impact and then food particle will come out so this is how we have to perform choking for the infants for adult we have to perform himlik maneuver for adult self it's a self abdominal thrust for a pregnant lady it's going to be the chest thrust and for the infant it's going to be the back close what in case while performing all these things victim got unconscious victim into unconscious state what we supposed to do stop doing all and follow the bls procedure because when the victim is unconscious that's mean vitals were stopped unconscious vitals were stopped immediately call an ambulance and you have to take care of the vitals role rather than the actual first aid because vitals circulation airway breathing is very important then the rest of the problem if these three are functioning properly then we can able to save victim life okay so any situation drowning or choking or a normal unconscious state or a heart related emergency and then unconscious state you have to follow the bls procedure only so this is important number 4 choking okay and um, someone requested in the uh, chat saying that uh, how to handle the epilepsy situation epilepsy mean it's a it's a fits seizure medically it's called seizure i'll quickly touch up on the seizure because uh, the, the topic whatever i brought it today it's is completed uh, up to this so uh, i'm going to talk about seizure quickly Uh, most of the time seizure is the dna kind of thing if mother or father has in the, in the in the genetic it may come via genetic or in the child would when they are getting high temperature fever suddenly fits can occur after late it will come in 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 their day to day life so this is how the fix will come in our everyone's life and while while fits happening this is how the body will react that's mean brain needs to be share the communications to the respective organ to eyes to hand to fingers whatever the sense everything needs to be shared by the brain only uh, for example if the brain is pro pro producing a 10 action within a second all right what happen if it is all of sudden 10000 or 1 lakh so this is the electrical implants popped out from the brain and too many communications comes and it's not reaching to the exact organ this is completely uh, communication disorder that's mean whatever the communication needs to go to hand that's going to eye whatever needs to go to mouth that's going to hand something like this is completely miscommunication happening and then the, the replace goes this is not executed by me it's a wrong communication that will not go back to the brain so this is completely a communication disorder in our brain due to the electrical implants uh, all of sudden and that time 
the body movement will happen the body will, will struggle uh, they will do all this kind of activity as a first responder as a general public what we can able to do rather than holding the victims move movement or rather than shifting the victim from one place to another place make sure the victim is not getting hurt whatever the sharp objects is there that needs to be that needs to be uh, removed for example if it is classroom immediately move the desk table chair everything and let the person do whatever he wants to do and if if for example if i'm going to hurt like this then you can hold this wall needs to we should not we, we cannot move the wall but we can hold the victim's hand position so you should not restrict you you have to protect the victim for further damage so this is as a first thing we have to do and second thing most of the time the victim may have a tendency of the victim's tongue will catch between the um, uh, teeth region so the tongue bite will occur and then bleeding will occur to avoid such go behind the person in the head region hold the chin bone and then raise the chin like this this is literally like a hetel chin lift okay uh, so you are, you are going to do the hetel chin lift so that the tongue will go further deep and it will not fall onto the any teeth region so that is how we can protect the tongue and if the per person is uh, uh, some vomiting or foam kind of thing is coming then take the face and then whatever the amount of liquid is there that needs to be swiped off and then come back to the normal position okay any fits have a time duration of 2 to 3 minutes the fits life is only 2 to 3 minutes if you are have if you are offering any iron like a, a knife iron rod or a key chain whatever it is if you are offering if you are not offering the fits will automatically stop within th within the third minute so these are all the myth which we are following for some region but you should not do so it's it's not going to cure the fits you no need to offer anything in the victim victim hand you just protect the victim after late the victim feel he lost entire energy in the body right so he feel time under stress put him into recovery position the fits whatever happened that not, that supposed to be uh, saved in the memory region then only we can able to recall but due to the communication disorder it's not saved in the memory region so fits people will not recognize that how they were been in the fits while during the fits and then they are, they are unable to recall also if we are sharing the information and then by feeling the body pain they will they will they will think about it okay i got the fever uh, sorry i got the fits so this is this is all they'll get uh, recognize so what you supposed to do after the fits put him into recovery position wait for ambulance we move the victim to hospital or if he if he is already fits victim then uh, do the medication based on the doctor's advice if it is first time move the victim to hospital if the victim is longer than 3 minutes then the situation is going for the severe immediate treatment is important that is why this time noting down the time will really help us okay so this is for fits victim we supposed to do and uh, there are people who is putting so many things in the group chat let me let me talk about it and if you have any doubt please mention your, uh, please raise your questions in the chat box i'm going to read the chat box now okay victim nose or ears is bleeding ears bleeding we cannot do anything we can we can whatever the amount of blood is coming let let the blood come out for the nose bleed you have what you supposed to do you have to uh, 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 lean forward like this kneel forward and then use the two fingers thumb finger and index finger and pinch the tip of the nose tip of the nose don't have a bone so that we can easily pinch and uh, it is happening due to the body temperature changes this when pressure changes if we go to sahara or if we go to uh, uh, some uh, uh, shimla kind of jammu kashmir kind of places people who are being in chennai hot city if they go to sudden this kind of uh, um, uh, changed environment uh, location we may we may have a, due to pressure we may have a bleeding uh, nose bleeding or by by excuse by doing something in the nose or by punching the nose this bleeding will happen so on that time by simply doing this for next 5 to 10 minutes open the my mouth and then start breathing via mouth and you have to strongly pinch the tip of the nose that is good enough to stop the nose bleeding if still it is it's bleeding clean the and then rush to hospital for the better treatment 
So Kavya ma'am, that is the answer for you. It's going to be one and a half hours. Yes, ma'am. I had like wonderful uh, message about first aid and CPR. Thank you so much. Any more questions? If there's anything, you can write to us or contact alert. Somebody is coming with something. Okay. I think... Uh, People are sharing their uh, thoughts here. Anyway, thank you so much. The patient is unconscious and the ambulance is available. Aparna Srini was saying those are all the typical uh, host scenario. We, we don't have anything much to do. As a first responder, we have to follow this protocol only. Beyond that, we cannot do anything now. You may expect that uh, I can I can say you can you can take this kind of tablet you can put this kind of tablet and all but uh, uh, even for doctors they needs to know the victim's uh, condition first before uh, uh, prescriptioning anything so we cannot do anything uh, in this case upon the map and as um, um, Parvati Kandasala ma'am mentioned further anything please write to alert dot ngo info at alert dot ngo to get clarify about it because this session was scheduled for one and a half hours and it's going to be one and a half hours now. And thank you so much for your wonderful participation and um, um, thank you so much for the Kala Pradeshni organization for arranging these kind of sessions to their organization, people and friends and family. Uh, and it's my uh, privilege that being as a trainer here and then meeting you all today and then teaching and sharing my knowledge with you all. So end of the day, what we are going to do, we are going to save someone's life a life it's our duty and we'll do more of that thank you so much for the opportunity over to parvati kantasala uh, thank you all for overwhelming response and uh, i hope you all enjoyed at least a little bit we are going to take away and go and uh, i should say uh, our earth series is doing very well this is going to be the 11th edition of ours and uh, also keep watching us every weekend we are coming with new projects with new eminent people and uh, enjoy the program thank you very much Kartik and I should thank once again our Santosh for doing so much so much for Kala Pradesh thank you Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you, uh, as you mentioned, thank you, Santosh uh, Ji, for the wonderful opportunity you created with uh, Alert and Kala Pradeshni past two years. And uh, thank you so much for the, all the participants for your one and a half hours time. Thank you so much. Thank you.